Welcome, welcome. Hey, I thought, Jackie, we'd talk about things that go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I got a list for you. Yeah, so do I. Good. And what spurred this was, I don't know if you saw it this week, but um, lawyers title, and I think it's fidelity, they're all under the same umbrella. There's about four or five of them, right? And Tuesday, nationwide, their system went down. They couldn't close. They're telling people we may be able to close on Monday. Now, this is the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. You know people had moving vans loaded up ready to go on Tuesday and Wednesday. Oh, to get absolutely. get in the new house before Thanksgiving. And now, I mean. Uh, imagine the people that had simultaneous closes, whether at the same title company or not the same title company. And if they closed and had to be out of their house, and then suddenly they can't close on their house. Were they in hotels? Is there, is there any kind of liability that's going to fall on the title company? I mean, it, I'm sure it cost a lot of people some decent amount of money. Yeah. And those are always tricky moves. I know mean, I had one once that, you know, it, the first house they sold closed in the morning and then immediately wired the money over to close that afternoon. And, you know, we had a couple of delays and, and they, it, it can just get ugly. I've had, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> There's always something that goes wrong, not every time, but no. you get surprised by some of the things that that pop up. I know you have a couple of examples. Oh my gosh! So absolutely. So I've I've had situations where, well, here's the worst one, um, and this is many many years ago uh, when we would you know ever since COVID everybody does the mobile notary, mobile notary, but it used to be common practice and always practice that you would meet your client at the title company and close at the title company and sign the docs and be there with your client years ago. I'm talking like 18, 20 years ago. Um, both myself and my mother, we had some clients that we were meeting at the title company for their closing. We got there, we're sitting there, we're talking to the escrow officer. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And we represented the sellers and the sellers didn't show up and then nobody could reach the sellers. We were calling them. Um, I don't even think they had cell phones. Um, we were calling their home phone, I believe. And lo and behold, it actually took two days. They, they just went MIA. We went by the house. They had moved out of the house already. Couldn't locate them. Come to find out, and this is horrific. They had been in a car accident and they both passed away. Oh man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It, it, the deal's dead then. I mean, nobody can sign anything. And actually, actually, it took about four months and they had to go through probate. But the children, I think it was the the daughter and her husband, uh, she was the executor of the will. And eventually those buyers, they rented a uh, short term rental and they actually bought the house still bought the house, but it took about four months because they had to go through probate. But, um, you know, it, it was, it was well, sad. It was, I, I mean, for two days, we didn't even know what happened to the sellers. Yeah, they I'll were bet. just MIA. I had a buyer once that was just mad. She, she didn't do any of the repairs that she agreed to do. I found out the day before she was divorced. Her husband finally drove up there and fixed everything. And she was just mad it was going to have that that was going to have to be done, even though we agreed on everything. And she just decided on the day of closing, she had an appointment for 10 o'clock and she said, I'm not going. I have a doctor's appointment and oh I had God. this doctor's appointment for months. And I said, well, and I'd had it with her at this point. And I said, you know, it's up to you. I said, but the buyers are going to walk away if you're not there in an hour. So she went and signed and yeah. the title company told me she was just nasty to everybody. It was right around on the Cinco de Mayo, I remember, because I oh, Lord. delivered a whole bunch of tequila to all the ladies that were in the title <laughs> office as an apology. But but there's always something that can come up. I know I like to schedule closings on a Thursday. Absolutely. On Wednesday. Even. On Friday. Wednesdays or Thursdays are great because yeah. if you have a delay, at least you're not delayed until Monday. Right, right. So if something goes wrong on Wednesday – you know, you can close on Thursday, you know, you might have to stay in a motel, you know, tell the moving truck, Hey, you know, stick around. Uh, but boy, if, if there's a problem on Friday, you're toast until Monday. So I really oh, recommend yeah. for viewers out there, you know, don't close on Fridays. That That's rough.
Never. I've had some real doozies, Rick. Um, back when we had the GFC, the Great Financial Crisis, and um, people were really mad giving up homes. I had many situations to where I represented the buyer. We would go in and the appliances would be gone or there would be holes in the wall. Um, I, I had one person, we went to do the final walkthrough and there was the most hideous, hideous smell. And I know many sellers did this, unfortunately. Uh, fish in the walls. Oh. It, it, oh, it was hideous. But I mean, I've had, I even had a scenario just recently. So I represented a buyer that was buying a home in Chandler, a second home. And um, unfortunately, the repairs didn't get done until the day prior to close of escrow. And he was flying in. He wanted to be in person to actually sign. So we moved closing by one day. So he gets here and I'm doing the, while he's on the plane, I'm doing the final walkthrough because I had just got notification that the repairs were done. And so I get there to do the final walkthrough and I'm looking at the repairs and the, the seller's agent, they had hired one of those Binzer repair companies. So we had bronze fixtures in the bathroom. Uh, I'm sorry, gold fixtures in the bathroom and the fixtures that had to be replaced were replaced with silver. I had all the staging furniture was still in the house. Um, there was a hole above the microwave that they were supposed to seal because they had, this was a complete remodel, right? Really nice remodel job they did. And so of course we're expecting that the repairs that get done are going to be the same quality of of the remodel that they did because they did a great job. So I get there and there was supposed to be a panel put above the microwave where the vent used to be because insulation was coming through the top. So instead of putting a panel, they had duct taped it. And I mean, <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? And then they were supposed to repair the stairs and I couldn't, the cord to pull the stairs down was gone. So I couldn't for the attic. So I couldn't pull the stairs down to check that. So my client gets off a plane. He's on the way to the title company. I'm sending him videos. I'm like, there are numerous repairs that aren't done correct. So I told the escrow officer, stop, don't record. Cause they were going to record that afternoon, right after he signed, got a hold of the seller's agent. And, um, they had some, they had plumbers there and contractors there that night. And we were luckily able to record the next day, but he had to get a hotel that night. I mean, there's so many situations that can happen. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, emotions run high too. And you get the one or two days before closing. And I know with uh, one of the eye buyers out there, we're selling a house in Fountain Hills and they were assuring me that the repairs that we had requested had been done. And I drove down to the house and nothing had been done. And then they finally said, uh, yeah, we sent a vendor out, vendor out there and he took care of it. And I called him, I said, you better not trust this fender because they, they didn't even wire it right correctly. And finally, I just said, give me a credit at close of escrow so my guy can hire the right people to get this done. But those things come up like right at the last minute. And then oh, yeah. I had one. So I, I guess what we're saying in this video is be prepared because you never know. And I had one where my seller had moved out and they had um, they hadn't moved out yet. They leased back for a few weeks from this buyer. And they were mm -hmm. the nicest couple and everything. They wrote one of those letters. Our kids want to grow up in the neighborhood and, and everything. And they and so when they went to move in, they never the agent never did a pre closing walkthrough. So there was no sign off. Big anymore. mistake. Big mistake. So when they went to move in, they found a hole in a door. Now that hole had been there for, mm -hmm. I guess, quite a few years, a little tiny hole. The guy wanted $200 for the door or he wasn't going to close. And I'm thinking, we just put in a brand new air conditioning for you. You know, we did all these other things the, and you guys didn't find that hole when you did the, did you do a pre-closing walkthrough? She goes, well, no. I said, well, you know, this, my did client they asked for it that during the inspection period. No, no, oh, didn't geez. ask for it. And so anyway, the seller was furious. The, the, the buyer was furious. And he said, I want 200 bucks from the seller for the door. And I said, well, you can't demand that where the money comes from. If you're, if you're looking for 200 bucks for repairs, you, you don't get to say 
Who, nope, right. I want it to come from him. So finally, I'm getting a hold of the agent, and I said, you know, let's just make this go away. I'll kick in a hundred. You kick in a hundred. She goes, well, I don't know. He wants two hundred dollars from the seller, and she was oh, a new Lord. agent. I said, we have to solve this in fifteen minutes, or I'm calling your broker. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so crazy. And it's, you know, it, it's hard too when you've got an, an, an inexperienced agent on the other side. So we had, I'm going to give you two more really good stories. So um, I'm going to save the best for the last. Wait till you hear this one. So uh, I had one about a year and a half ago. Ruby and I actually represented the buyer and the seller. Um, we originally had the listing. And so um, when we got a, a interested party, the buyer, Ruby and I will separate so that we can do dual agency and make it very fair. So she represented the buyer. I represented the seller. And um, this buyer was just crazy is the ease, the best word I can come up with. So anyways, they needed to do the final walkthrough and they had asked for a huge long laundry list of repairs. One of the repairs that had to be done was it was a tri-level home and there was a crawl space that you could access behind the refrigerator in the kitchen to get to the crawl space underneath the dining room, which was like the second kind of it was, you know, you had your, your basement, then you had a couple steps up, not basement, but the tri-level. So it's a couple steps down, a couple steps up to like where the dining and the living and the kitchen is, and then upstairs to the house, right? So there was a crawl space under the dining room and they were supposed to fix a beam under there. Now we got it fixed. We had pictures. We had a structural engineer who signed off, paid invoice, photos, everything, right? So the, the buyer meets me at the house because Ruby was unavailable to do the final walkthrough. We're going through the house. From the second he walked in the door, he's like touching the window seals going, there's dust in this house. Why is there dust in this house? And he's like, the carpets haven't been vacuumed. I'm like, you can see the vacuum lines. I, I knew the sellers. They had cleaned the house very nicely, but he found dust like on the blinds. So anyways... I'm talking to the wife and we're standing in the family room. And the next thing I know, I turn around, he's pulled out the refrigerator and there is a panel that's sealed. Right. And cause when they did the repair, they put the panel and they sealed it and bolted it. He's pulled out the panel and tore the wall apart and is crawling into the crawl space because he wants to see for himself that the beams are fixed. Oh. So now I got a hole in the wall. Then he looks at me and he says, I want the sellers to pay to have that repaired. I'm like, you just tore it out. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Long story short, Ruby and I split it. We ended up paying for it. it. It was ridiculous. I mean, the guy just literally tore the panel off it and ripped the sides of the wall when he took it off. People's personalities change through a transaction, don't they? Really oh nice. My God. I had a buyer from Tempe, like the nicest guy in the world. He was from uh, somewhere back east. I mean, another country. And and uh, and then we, he says, you know, I'm not going to ask for anything to be repaired when we write the offer in this house. I go, okay, well, had the inspection. There were quite a few things, but nothing major. Um, and he wanted twenty thousand. I go, you what? I want twenty thousand. I want <laughs> to take twenty thousand off the price have them credit me 20. I said, we don't even have 20,000 in repairs. I, I'm going to have to itemize this for you. Well, you need yeah. to make it look like 20,000. I said, well, I can't lie. Right. I mean, if you want, I said, I think the most, if I were to go full retail might be $12,000 might, might be nine, but he insisted. And I had to say, I, you know, I don't see how we can do this. In the meantime, we had a problem with the, him, verifying that he was an Arizona residence and he couldn't get the mortgage. And the lender said, and he ran a bunch of convenience stores. She says, every time I ask him for an address and he gives it to me, it's a convenience store. She goes, I can't put this loan through right. Three days before we're supposed to close, the sellers moved out. He couldn't get financing. We had to, you know, cancel the contract. And he said he was going to sue me if I couldn't get his earnest money back. Now he got his earnest money back. But he turned into the meanest, nastiest oh guy gosh. I had ever met. And he actually called me and he said, well, I'm sorry this didn't work out. I'll be ready to buy next year and I'm going to give you a call. And I said, I'll give you a referral. Yeah, really? <laughs> oh, my Lord. All right. You want to hear my worst one? Yep. Okay. So 
years ago before my mom passed away she passed away about 17 years ago but we were we were partners for about 15 years and she had been in the business forever so um you know my specialty is horse property so there was a large ranch in cave creek on 10 acres um at the time now this this quite a while ago uh i believe it was listed at three and a half million big big beautiful ranch right so i had had um i used to do a lot of the horse shows and i got a referral by one of the top arab trainers i i won't say his real name um we'll say jack and uh anyways he had a, a gentleman that he was going to marry that was coming from texas and very well off and i'll say tom is his name anyways so tom and jack i show properties to right and we find this big, beautiful ranch, put it under contract for three and a half million dollars. And we go through all the inspections and there were some structural issues with this house. Uh, the What's the rich guy? Is that Jack, Tom and Jack? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, so, so the guy with all the money, right? He dresses galore. He's got the best boots, the best hats. He drives the biggest truck. He buys the husband a brand new truck while we're in escrow for cash. This is a cash deal, right? Has proof of funds. He had put a $50,000 earnest deposit down when we went under contract, right? By via wire. So we were under contract for months because there were some structural issues and the sellers had to pay to get a bunch of, of structural repairs done to the house before he would close. Right. We are down to like four or five days prior to closing. And all of a sudden I get a call from the husband who says, Oh my God, they repossessed my truck this morning. I'm like, what? He goes, they repossessed my truck this morning and I can't find Tom. Tom is the rich cowboy, right? can't find tom anywhere now tom has already been to the title company i'm sorry we were only about two or three days away from closing because he had already been to the title company and had already signed and had already wired funds the funds were there right three and a half million dollars sitting at the title company and the, the husband's telling me how they repossessed his truck he can't find his husband he doesn't know what's going on i get a call from the title company that says the funds have been, they'd been there for a couple days, but the, the wire was fraudulent. Oh, it took months for the title company to find out that that $50,000 earnest deposit, it sat there for months and nobody knew it was fraudulent. Anyways, long story short, the guy had actually, it was a vacant house. The guy had been staying at the house when he was in fights with the husband, all his mail was going to the house. He had um, done something to where somehow a lien got put on the house for a couple hundred thousand dollars that he didn't even own yet. It was on the guy ended up in jail. He, he was, uh, they found him. He was arrested. He went to jail, I think like seven, eight years, something like that. But we spent four months and the guy was just a jerk. He was verbally abusive to my mother. Like he would scream at her and treat her like she was an idiot. Like he just, was very arrogant and we put up with it, you know, but yeah, so four months, three and a half million dollar deal. And that guy, everything about him was fraudulent. See, and that's, that's a hard thing to verify too. Cause you probably saw bank records. You probably saw a statement. He gave you he proof. He wired of the funds. <laughs> the yeah, title so company, the title company had wires and received funds. They couldn't even explain what happened until they were contacted by the police. Wow, very interesting. Well, I guess the it bottom line crazy. is there's a lot of things that go on in a transaction and a lot of times buyers and sellers don't even see that yeah. we see that we try to put the fires out before, you know, you have to make that phone call. And right. sometimes you're just on the phone, you're back and forth and you know, I can't believe I'm seeing this. I can't believe I'm hearing this. Let's get this fixed before I have to make a phone call. So then sometimes you can, at the end of the transaction go, 
you know, I can tell you now, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I just had one like that. And it's like, you know, the, the big the ones I'm telling you about with the sellers dying and the, you know, the guy from Texas. I mean, those are far and few between. I've had two incidences that were horrific like that in my 34 years. But I just had one where we um, we had two transactions together. So I represented uh, the buyer. We were selling her house as well. And the, we, the, but we also had the buyer buying her house. So it was three transactions that buyer was actually, um, contracted and he was going back and forth between German and Poland and all this stuff. And so we had three transactions that were kind of all tied together. And the guy had somehow he had wired the money to the wrong place. Like there was four or five incidences that had happened that could have made that transaction fall apart. My buyer seller never knew any of it. We got it all fixed. And then at the end, I told her, I'm like, this is all the things that had happened. And she's like, oh my God, I'm so glad you didn't tell me. I'm like, why was I going to stress you? I just needed to fix everything. Yeah. So yeah, that happens more times than, uh, than people know. So it's interesting. Well, I'm glad you shared some of those stories. And like I said, I think, uh, um, you know, there's it. You have to be mentally prepared when you're buying or selling a home, not to be negative and say, well, something's going to go wrong, but you, you need to be on top of it. And you need to communicate with your agent and uh, expect anything because you just never know what can happen. A lot of them just go really smoothly. I, we've had several that just, you, you go, I can't believe how easy this was and how great it was. And, but you know, mm -hmm. us agents, we only get paid for unlocking doors. So. Right. Um, <laughs> right. If people really only knew. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, Jackie, good to talk to you again. Have a great day and thanks for coming on. Thanks Rick.